And I'm going to head back to that market and try to avoid that umbrella salesman. Good morning and welcome to my last video here from Livorno. But it's not Livorno I'm going to walk around today because I'm off to Pisa. I'm going to take a walk around the city, look at some more old walls, citadels, find that famous leaning tower and also the uh, Piazza di Cavalieri as well. The old Knight Square. So uh, look, lots to look forward to in this video. And then tonight I have to fly back to London. Mm, it's never good when you have to go back home. Because <laughs> that means work. <laughs> but never mind, if I don't go, I can't come back. But I've had a great time here in Livorno. Seen some fantastic sights. And despite the weather, I've had a really good time. And my Airbnb accommodation, well, that was just absolutely brilliant. I do love staying at Airbnb accommodation. They're just the best. They haven't paid me to say that. They are my own words based on my experiences with Airbnb. And the view from my window, well, it's probably the best it could possibly be. It was great during the daytime, but at night time, it was just as good. But just up ahead is the train station and my train to Pisa. in Pisa and the sun is shining and it's about 24 degrees today which is toasty warm and it's the, the wind has died down as well which is a bonus and I come across a interesting section of city wall here just turn the camera around there we go there we are we'll find a lot more sections of city wall there's a quite an impressive section up by that uh, leaning tower which is somewhere up ahead but i had such fun and games at Livorno station i thought I'd, I'd catch the early train and the station was full of students all queuing up to buy tickets and three of the automatic machines weren't working which meant that the queues were extra long. So I missed the train that was originally going to catch. And I missed the next one as well. I waited for about 25 minutes for these students to sort themselves out. That was not good at all. So I had to catch a later train. But as I was walking up to the platform, all the students were running up to catch their train, which they missed. <laughs> <laughs> that was lovely. Nice little start to the day to watch all the students miss their train. So some positivity came out of my negativity from waiting in the queue. But now let's, uh, let's explore the history and the sights of Pisa on the way up to the Leaning Tower. <laughs> another impressive section of city wall. This really is uh, quite magnificent. And an interesting monument here with an anchor attached. I guess it's a reminder to, uh, to Pisa's past as a port. Because the sea used to come all the way up here about seven, eight hundred years ago. It was a thriving port. It's absolutely wonderful. And this impressive section of wall really is oh, amazing. 
it's, it's amazing because the, uh, of, of the history of Pisa and the fact that these, these walls have remained intact since they were built in the 13th century. But there's an interesting uh, wall mural pointing out behind me. Absolutely brilliant to see that. Do you know, I've seen works of art like that in public. Absolutely amazing. But throughout the history of, um, of Pisa, it was never conquered. No army actually conquered Pisa, which was uh, it's quite surprising. But these walls, they're, they're huge. 11 meters, 36 feet high. And they stretch 1.9 miles or three kilometers around the city. And just walking through the gates, I noticed a railway signal just above the arch. Now I did ask one of the locals whether there was ever a, a train that went through here, it might have been a branch line or a goods line into the city, but no, th th this was not a uh, part of a railway network. So I'm wondering why there's a, a railway signal on the top of the uh, top of the archway there. If you happen to know, then uh, drop me a comment in the comment section below. I'd be interested in finding out. But there's some beautiful uh, defensive holes here in the uh, in the wall, and looking through, they're about 12 feet thick. So this was a this was a. a serious defensive structure it's amazing just how much has survived given the history of uh, of the region especially in sort of 1848 1849 with the uh, the wars of independence which resulted in the uh, the unification of the provinces and the formation of modern day italy but it's really rather pleasant here so I'll just walk back through the gate and a little bit further on towards the tower and see what else we can discover as we walk around the, the city walls. But just as I finished filming, when I, when I arrived in that uh, first section of wall, I spotted a plan on, the, um, on one of the buildings which is, shows the development of that site. And they're building gardens there, which is rather nice. So I think in a, in a year or so, that would be rather pleasant indeed to walk around there. But these walls are so impressive, and so high and so well maintained. You can see they've been, that's been repaired in sections as well. And that's always good to see. Let's walk a little bit further and see what else we can discover about the city walls here in Pisa. over the road a bit further up the next part of this impressive city wall and there's another, another postern here another entrance gate let's go and take a little look at that it's interesting the little building that's built into the moat uh, i'm not sure what it is but there's some still some damage on the outside from the second world war it's interesting to see that's still still there but this this old postern, this is quite nice actually. Dates from 1287. It's been here a long time. And you can still see the, uh, the marks on the walls, where the hinges for the doors would have been, and grooves for a portcullis, or perhaps uh, where the doors closed into in some way. Probably some sort of defensive gate there on both ends. But it also looks like there's a there have been a structure here for a drawbridge as well. Added protection for the gate into the city. This is absolutely lovely, it really is. In such marvellous condition. Stonework. Absolutely brilliant. But now let's cross the Arno River. See what we can discover on the other side. On the way up to the tower.
just crossed the River Arno on the Ponte della Cittadella, the bridge there. And this is the, uh, the North Citadel of Pisa. And there are some steps here which go up onto the, t onto the walls. So let's go up there and walk on the walls and see where these go. There's only a few steps, I think. And an impressive tower directly ahead of me. This is really rather nice up here. Look out over the uh, over the citadel to the uh, Ponto di Mare or the Sea Gate. This is the uh, the Gelf Tower, one of the corners here of the of the citadel. The citadel I visited the other day uh, on the eastern side of the city was really impressive. Uh, this section here doesn't point, it does, it doesn't disappoint either. Let's walk around the corner and see where this goes. Or, or doesn't, as the case may be. Oh well. <laughs> Can I see a view of the, uh, of the gate from up here? Let's walk down onto the, uh, the lower level and have a close look at that gate and see what we can discover down there. There's uh, nice little views here overlooking the, uh, the remainder of the wall and the railway line. And quite a busy road junction as well. So uh, let's just walk down these steps and uh, down the other side. There we go. Walk down these steps. Ooh. This was quite a wealthy area back in the 15th century. Part of the, part of the Citadel Vecchia. We used to build ships here and all sorts of things. There's also an arsenal here as well. Standing under the gate here, you can look up and see where the portcullis would have been. The top part is open to the sky, so Probably another structure on the top, but really rather interesting. See the thickness of the walls, good sort of 12 feet thick, similar to the um, to the walls on the other parts, on the other the other side of the Arno River. But it's really interesting to see that. But now let's head on up to the uh, that Leaning Tower and the cathedral, and there's another section of impressive wall up there. I'm gonna do the touristy things here in Pisa. Citadel is another gate and the gateway to the Leaning Tower and the Cathedral and an array of tourist shops. My goodness me, I've never seen so many tourist shops all in one location. It's buzzing here. These shops are selling so much stuff. T-shirts and well you name it, I think you'll find it with P the word Pisa written on it. Absolutely wonderful. I've no idea how much they're charging, but it's going to be expensive, I know. But there we go. They're doing a brisk trade. People are buying things. And it's starting to rain. Oh, I was hoping the rain would hold off today. There's a few spots in the air. And there's a salesman selling, oh, Pisa umbrellas. There we go. No, I don't want to buy an umbrella. <laughs> I have one, thank you. No, 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 no. No, no, I don't, I don't want to. No, 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 I don't need to buy one, honestly. I know it's raining. I've got one in here. It's a nice umbrella, but I don't want to buy one. <laughs> Five euros? It's a good price. It's a good price. I will tell you it's a good price, but it's a gift. Is it a gift? It's a gift. No, no, a gift. No, I'm not paying five euros. I don't need to pay five euros for a. Honestly. <laughs> Coerced into buying an umbrella for five euros. It was a nice umbrella. 
It was a nice umbrella, I'll give him that. But in England, we have the pound shop. And guess where I buy my umbrellas from? That's right, the pound shop. And they cost a pound, which is brilliant. What's that, about uh, 86, 86 cents? Hmm, yeah. So I don't need to buy an umbrella. But there we go. Cafes here. And more shops down the end. This is absolutely brilliant. Absolutely brilliant here. It stopped raining. Good choice not to buy an umbrella. I saved myself five euros. <laughs> oh dear, oh dear. Activity of the market behind. We've come up to the northern part here on the other side of the cathedral and leaning tower to look at a section of wall that I wanted to come and look at and this really is a beautiful section and the backdrop behind is the leaning tower and the dome of the cathedral. But looking at this area on Google Maps I noticed something rather interesting and that was a car park with some aeroplanes in it. Now, don't expect to see aeroplanes in a car park. And I think this car park belongs to a school or a college or something, which means I'm trespassing. But that needn't matter because I'm making a video. So here we go. Here are the aeroplanes. Absolutely amazing to see them. I'm not sure what they are. I don't recognise them. Um, I think they're MIGs. Certainly the orange one is a MIG. Let's walk around this way. I think that's a MIG. But it's rather interesting to see, see them here. I don't know why they're here. Who put them here? Or whether this is a college or not. I think it probably is. There's a lot of people studying. And uh, if, you, if you happen to know, then please leave a leave a comment and let me know about these uh, these aircraft. But there we go. Absolutely brilliant to see them. So before I get told off for trespassing, <laughs> I'll leave you with some pictures of the aeroplanes. And I'm going to head back to that market and try and avoid that umbrella salesman. It's nice to take the weight off my feet. I've been walking around since I left my Airbnb this morning at about quarter past seven. That's about mm, four hours ago. I found this lovely little cafe at the top of the market. No umbrella salesman around, probably because it stopped raining. But I got a rather delicious cappuccino. That does taste very refreshing indeed. Always a good time to enjoy a coffee. But this one tastes even better because it's been sponsored. So thank you to Paul Graham who went onto the Buy Me A Coffee link and purchased a couple of coffees, which is enough to cover this delicious cappuccino and a chocolate tart. And if you'd like to get a mention on my channel, then do as Paul did. Follow the link to Buy Me A Coffee and uh, to see what tasty delights I can find wherever I happen to be. You get a mention on my channel as well. But there's so much history here in Pisa. I've done a little walk up from the railway station, following the wall all the way up to, uh, well, that car park. Really rather interesting. But, uh, 
I'm gonna head off now, back down to the market, avoiding umbrella salesmen, and walk into the, uh, the complex, which is the Leaning Tower and the Cathedral. I've got no plans to go up the tower on this trip because there just isn't enough time. I do have to get back to the airport in a couple of hours time to catch my flight back to London. And I would hate to miss my flight because I decided to do some extra tourist attractions here in Pisa. So I'm gonna finish my tasty cappuccino and my tasty little tart and go and take a look at the outside of the tower and the other buildings as well that surround the cathedral. <laughs> oh, I did enjoy that cup of coffee. Really rather nice. Came just at the right moment. Do you love my coffee? I'm gonna have another walk round through the market. Been accosted several times by street vendors. I think there's one street vendor for every tourist. And there's one uh, street vendor ahead of me who's carrying in multiple handbags. And I don't match his shoes. Mm. I think he has a fashion problem. No, he's a street vendor. <laughs> Let's walk through the archway here and towards a sea of tourists. My goodness me, this must be the most photographed area in Europe. The baptistry, the cathedral, and Pisa's famous Leaning Tower. And hundreds and thousands of tourists. <laughs> and they're all trying to photograph the same thing. <laughs> and in a minute, so will I. <laughs> but let's have a look at the outside of some of these buildings. I can get through this sea of tourists and find my way in. I think there's an entrance fee into, uh, into the cathedrals and up the tower. But I'm gonna do that on another occasion, especially when the weather's a little better. It's very cloudy at the moment, a little windy. We're going up a tower and there's still spots of rain in the air. And there's still umbrella salesmen trying to accost me and extract five euros from me. A rather nice umbrella. I will give them that, it's a nice umbrella. And they've been busy, it's quite a few people carrying them, so they have been busy at their work. <laughs> but now let's go in. <laughs> oh, look at this lot of tourists. <laughs> All trying to photograph themselves with their hands out in front of them in a pose that makes them look as though they're propping up the leaning tower. And I'm just walking in front of absolutely everybody because everybody's walking in front of everybody here. Dear oh dear. So many people. So many people here. But the building behind me is the baptistry. Action started in 1152. And it replaced an, an, a, a previous baptistry that was on this location. And it was completed in 1363 and designed by a man called uh, Dietislavi. I haven't come across him before. But his work is absolutely incredible. Outside, the architecture is incredible, especially the uh, the row of statues that uh, adorn the outside. Really are. There is a work of art. There's craftsmanship in those days, much more than you get now with modern buildings. But this is the uh, entrance to the Jewish cemetery. It's been a cemetery here since 1674. Unfortunately, I can't go in because I would have liked to have had a little walk around 
and to see if any really old stones um, have survived from the 17th century. But I'm struck by the size of the gates. They are enormous. And as for that bolt, that's huge. And the, and the, uh, the hole for the key as well. That was some key that must have fitted in that, lo in that lock. Wow, brilliant. But the next building to look at is the cathedral. And the queues to go in are massive. And if they're massive for the cathedral, I hate to think what they'd be like when I get round to the tower. But let's have a look at the outside of the cathedral. And look at the delights of the architecture and some of its history as well. three structures here, the baptistry, the cathedral and the tower, is the cathedral which is actually the oldest. Construction began in 1063 and was completed in 1092 and consecrated in the year 1118 and it's the seat of the Archbishops of Pisa. One of the things that people come to see here is the facade of this cathedral. The columns at the front and the uh, huge doors are just quite incredible and the uh, carvings into the metalwork on the outside of the doors are just incredible they really are there's no word to describe them and the intricacies of the, the carvings on the pillars are quite incredible above the doors is a is an artwork and that's just as splendid as the rest of the cathedral as well the stonework on the front really is to be marvelled at. The craftsmanship, the workmanship that, go, that went into a building like this nearly a thousand years ago really is incredible. This is craftsmanship at its best and it's quite different from other cathedrals that I spotted in, that I visited in uh, Italy and around the world. Um, great cathedrals in England of Canterbury and of course Westminster Abbey and they're all quite different from the uh, the architectural design of Pisa Cathedral. There was a fire here back in 1595 and that destroyed part of the roof so that's that was that's the modern part of the cathedral but the rest it's just as it was built nearly a thousand years ago. Now let's go on to the main attraction here, which is the tower, the famous leaning tower here in Pisa. And I've been wanting to come here for simply ages. Every time you see a picture of, of Italy, it's a picture of the leaning tower of Pisa. And finally, I get to, I get to, <laughs> to visit Pisa and see the sights of this incredible location. So, uh, Let's go and find that tower. The Leaning Tower is actually the bell tower for the cathedral and it's the youngest of the three structures here. It was constructed between 1173 and 1372 and houses seven bells, the oldest of which was cast back in 1262. The tower's height is 55.86 metres, that's 183 feet. But due to its unstable foundations, the tower leans. And that leaning, that tilting, became so great back in 1990 that immediate uh, stabilization work was needed and that reduced the, the tilt from 5.5 degrees back down to 3.97 which is a lot more stable and today the tower is not at risk of collapsing. 
But let's walk down a little further towards the tower and get a better view. But it really is absolutely incredible looking at it. You can see the back end of the cathedral here as well and the top of the small dome it really is magnificent. And you can see why this is such a popular uh, tourist attraction. I think out of all the tourist attractions that I've been to in the world, I think this has to be the busiest of all of them. There are just so many people here all trying to take the same photographs of the same object. <laughs> it's just mad. And I'm doing exactly the same. <laughs> if you can't beat them, join them. But looking up at the tower, it is absolutely magnificent. around here looking at the baptistry the cathedral and of course the leaning tower the famous bell tower here in Pisa just a marvel of uh, architecture absolutely incredible any downside to this place is the sheer number of tourists that are just swamping it and I'm here out of season so if I've been here back in August, at the height of this tourist season, how many more people would be here? How many more people would be trying to take the same photographs in the same location? Gosh. I know that Venice has a problem with, uh, with tourism, or over-tourism, I should say. And I think Pisa might be have as well. But absolutely beautiful here it really is and i've been accosted by a subway man do i really need a, a subway no <laughs> still it makes a change from an umbrella salesman <laughs> oh dear oh dear but this is absolutely beautiful i'm going to come back here again because i want to look at the inside of the tower and i definitely want to look at the inside of the cathedral and and the baptistry as well there's just so much here to see and it definitely needs another another visit let's just put this menu in the bin our oh, bin's locked I even locked the bins here what's i'm gonna do steal the contents <laughs> i'll find another bin but now let's head on into the city center and try and find the piazza della cavalieri the Piazza dei Cavalieri or the Knight Square absolutely wonderful here and the prominent building ahead well that's the Knight's Palace it's home to the Medici family prominent family here in Tuscany and the statue at the front well that's the head of the family Cosimo the first Cosimo was born in Florence on the 12th of June 1519 and he was a second Duke of Florence from 1537 until 1569, when he became the first Grand Duke of Tuscany. And that was a title he held until his death on the 12th of April, 1574. And what a magnificent statue it is. And what an incredible building. Look at the architecture on the front and the artwork as well. Absolutely beautiful. And the architecture in the square is also really lovely. It's, I'm lost for words looking at the architecture in Italy. It's just so stunning. On every street corner, there is fantastic architecture. Stunning designs, intricate carvings on some of the buildings and very ornate uh, statues and sculptures on the outside as well. And the building just here is no exception. It's in St. Saint, uh, Stephen's Church. It's absolutely beautiful. It really is. 
I've really enjoyed walking around Pisa. And the closer I got to the, uh, the main tourist attractions, the more difficult it became to film with so many people. I have never experienced so many people in one place at the same time in any tourist location. And I filmed in O'Connell Street in Dublin and that's full of people. But here, out of season, so many tourists. I guess Pisa really is popular with visitors from around the world who have come to see the attractions. And yeah, that's why I came here as well. <laughs> I came for the same reasons as everybody else, to marvel at the sights on the, uh, on the square there and those three magnificent buildings. But I now have to get back to the airport to catch my flight back to London because I have to work tomorrow. <laughs> but I will return to Pisa again because I want to visit the um, the cathedral. I want to go inside. I want to climb the bell tower. Anybody who has watched my videos knows I love church bells and to go up the bell tower and see some bells to me is really exciting. So this is where I end this video and my series here from Pisa and Livorno. There's another series coming very shortly from somewhere else in Europe. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, ding that bell, and we'll see you very soon for another adventure somewhere else. Thanks for watching.